Oh, there's no going back now. All right, so today is a pretty big day. This is officially studio build day one. I could not be more excited about getting started on this project, so. Okay, so this is it. All right, awesome. It is, um, it's a decent sized space, it'll work. So I'm gonna guess all of that is running, that's why this is lower than I, everything I else. I would guess so, yeah. Okay. And then down here we have the dungeon. Yeah, so it's kind of creepy when we yeah, first that toured the house. Me out a little bit. <laughs> we saw this and we we're like, what the hell is right. happening here? My thought for this is amp vault. Yeah, it would be ideal. That's one of those things that will have to be addressed. But exactly how until we actually get it completely opened up and can see it in its entirety. Do you care if I break this? No. <laughs> it's coming down anyways. Yep. This is the main trunk for all your first floor AC right here. Pretty big. Um, so that's load bearing. Okay, another beam. That's okay, I thought that's, there would have been. Okay, that's there serious. Is. That one's that one's definitely holding some weight. Yeah. Okay, and then it looks like a sewer line. Okay. So the way I'm picturing using this space is for two or three primary projects. One is I want to make albums down here for myself and people that I'm working with. It's not going to be a commercial studio. It's not going to be open right, to the public right, or anything. Right. The second thing is doing full band, full production video shoots and live streams from down here. So with that, with that in mind, camera angles are important. Lighting is important. So in regards to the vocal booth question, or at least one ISO booth, would you recommend us building one down here or not? I, I think ha having at least one booth is, is is probably a good idea, and it might even be a good idea to figure out a way to let it be somewhat adjacent to your control room. Okay, so this will be the control room. Uh, oh, that does bring me another option, though. We talked about orienting your, your sitting position in sure. two different ways. Right. This wall could potentially go away and move that way some. Really? Whereby making this part of the space much bit bigger. bigger. Six, eight feet that way if we wanted to. Right. And then now we've got plenty of seating space back here that's far enough away from the mains right. that it makes sense. You're getting more distance this way, which makes right. it better. Which and also then, means if we wanted to, we could give you a second booth here. Interesting. And I mean, think, let's think oh. about that because that could be a cool thing to do. Because the thing I like about Rick's studio is having the booth right off the control room there uh, and then you know having some cabs and stuff right there it makes it real easy to just Short run back and forth. Cabs. But I like, I like this. So if essentially the wall for the second booth starts to go here. however we want it to go, right. probably at a little angle. Think about this. You're gonna need to place your console far enough from wherever this wall ends up mm -hmm. to be able to get behind it right literally you know get Patch behind stuff it. on it in case you know for the, the you don't do it often right but you need to and, every now and also you, you don't typically want your speakers right up against the wall right correct you want to have a little a little room there for them to breathe and and then you know your desk is going to be close to 40 inches deep yeah depending on what it is then you add a chair right Next thing you know, and then you got the couch, and then you're, everything you're kind of, right. You're getting in you're right you're there, getting into a pretty but that's okay, snug though. situation. But right, I think it'll be fine because if we add, you know, five feet that direction, then it, it actually it opens up pretty well. Yeah, this gonna be a pretty badass studio down here. Big tracking room, nice control room, an amp vault. 
yep. plus an editing suite upstairs. It's going to be highly functional. Yeah, I mean, we can do some serious projects down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is it. Tomorrow we are officially starting demolition here in the basement for the studio. We're going to take this place completely down to the studs. Uh, this room will no longer exist. This drop ceiling is all going to come down. This wood flooring, wood flooring is going to come up. Uh, and this HVAC system and hot water heater sort of closet is going to go away as well. This is essentially the last time this basement is ever going to look like this. I don't know how long it's looked like this. I don't know when this was finished. My guess is sometimes in the mid 80s based off the look of it. But, you know, 30 plus years of this basement being this way is about to change. And um, I guess we'll start right now. Okay, so basement is completely demoed. It took two days, we hired a crew to come down. Yeah, seeing this now is a bit overwhelming because <laughs> um, it's kind of a, oh shit. Uh, here we are. There's no turning back at this point. But it's also really exciting because like I said at the beginning of this episode, it's been a dream of mine for a very, very long time to have a studio. I shot one into this, uh this joint right here one time, building a studio. Hey, well, I have a pair of pliers and pulled it out. And oh, kept dude. building a studio. <laughs> God, dude, gross. We're just gonna go with this. Okay. Um, as our, our outside wall. Okay. Thinking about what we're gonna do with that odd little, what used to be a closet shape there. Fantastic. 13 feet put sister right there. We're gonna go ahead and let this have a little bit of a pitch that way. Pop that, and then let's see what that is. That is, you just set it almost exactly on 15 feet, six inches. God, I'm so talented. <laughs> That's gonna probably be more or less the interior wall right there. Okay. All right? Give or take an inch or so. You're gonna need at least three feet. Right. Between here and the back of your desk. So we're just gonna say, for the argument of it, we're gonna say three and a half feet, how about that? And then from there, okay, we're gonna go, probably about three and a half feet is gonna be your desk, right? Yeah. Whether it's a console or a, an Argosy or whatever, it's gonna be more or less, you know, here, so. It's about where I'm standing. Um, so yeah, you're about at mixed position right there. Okay. So, your line of sight into the booth. Right there. It's right there. So, door opens out, control room. Well, we'll then riddle me this. We'll think that through, though. What is, what's happening here, then, with this wall? Well, this wall, we're going to take this uh, 1972 paneling down, and we're going to frame all this in, and then we're going to put two layers of sheetrock on this, and then we're going to build a wall in front of it. <laughs> So one of the things I'm really excited about with this project is uh, I've never done any kind of construction before. So I'm going to be learning a lot, do some basic construction stuff, which is going to be awesome. And then we're going to do some complex construction stuff. <laughs> Solvers. There it is. It's not exactly a perfect sawhorse. But it's our sawhorse. It's your sawhorse, and we're gonna love that sawhorse. The real sawhorse is the friends we made along the way. Would you just look at it? That's, that's a workstation. All right, so we have uh, the sawhorse built, got our workstations all set up. I think we're gonna start framing some walls, yeah? Yes, sir. All right. So this is gonna be the outside wall. Now, 
do we want to go that big on the front wall or do we want to cheat that in a little bit and let our um, angles here be a little bit uh, more relaxed? All right, so we've spent the last 45 minutes to an hour chewing on this problem and we have a pretty big snag that we hadn't anticipated, uh, but it's something we're gonna have to address. So essentially what we're gonna do is go ahead and start framing in everything here in the basement except this one area which is going to take a little bit of thought and a little bit of work so our problem area is up here our plan is to frame a wall to expand this wall out this way to gain another probably four feet of control room to go flush with this door jam and in a perfect world all of this is going to go away the problem is these floor joists up here above the hvac trunk line have to be supported somehow. So it's an issue that we're working on. Probably get a structural engineer out to take a look at it. And the other thing is we can't move any of this stuff until that HVAC trunk line gets moved, which is not gonna happen for another two weeks, something like that. Yeah, he, uh, he's going on vacation. Yeah, so that is gonna have to sit and wait, but we can go ahead and start getting the rest of this stuff built out. got now is we've put up some temporary walls so that we can take down the stuff that is at this moment being load bearing even though the demolition crew that came in and took it down took most of it down already not fully realizing that it was load bearing so <laughs> we sort of dodged a bullet with this yeah but now we're all good and secure and we can break things nice all right so we've demolished what's remaining of this wall and we're getting ready to frame up the first full wall, the first permanent wall. Um, and we're trying to decide where to uh, where to start. So what were we just looking at here, Jimmy? Well, we, uh, our, our layout is having a little drift, is what I would say. We, we had a concept of where things were gonna go, but there were already things sort of there and in the way. So in order to really be able to see it and, and feel it, we had to tear all this stuff down. And now that we have, is presenting some slightly different parameters for us. So I think we're gonna wind up inching the control room a couple of three or four inches larger, which um, bigger is always better, right? Yeah. And we're deciding to add some extra space to the control room because when you're recording, most of your time is spent in the control room. Most of your time recording, most of your time mixing and working. So if I had to choose, do I want more space in the live room or more space in the control room, I'm gonna pick the control room, so that's what we're gonna do. Also, we have to tear this wall down because it's literally held in by nothing. Hot damn! All right, so we've hit a pretty big milestone here. Uh, this is our first official wall completed here. This is gonna be uh, the exterior wall of the control room. We've got uh, the main window framed in. We've got everything braced and rough framed. And uh, this is a pretty big moment. Like, it's starting to really take shape. Uh, Jimmy and Chris are finishing up this area here so the control room will make an angle turn here we'll have another window and then we'll have a door into the control room or a pair of doors rather into the control room over there i'm i'm ready to go <laughs> let's keep this <laughs> let's, 
keep going. But man, I'm I'm liking it. I think it's uh, it's coming together almost like a plan. We had several little fires to put out yesterday before we were able to really get rolling here with it. Not literal Incl fires. Not literal <laughs> fires, but you know the figurative ones. I've gotten used to the tools. Chris is getting used to the tools, and we can kind of all get to the point where everyone's doing their jobs. And uh, it, instead of being, you know, us helping Jimmy, now it's starting to become a three-man team here, which is awesome. So we're going to get the rest of this wall framed in, I guess. And then uh, the next wall will be the interior. So and then that wall is going to be framed with two-by-fours instead of two-by-sixes. Why did we do the two different densities? For one thing, we have more room, more air in the dead space between this front wall. And uh, it also leaves more room for denser insulation or, or you know more insulation which is good primary reason we use two by sixes is because we were replacing a lot of load bearing stuff and so we wanted to make sure that it was plenty sturdy to do the job All right, so uh, getting towards the end of the day here, and now this is really starting to look like something. So we've tied in the door jam to the main wall here with this angle behind us, and uh, have the second window just about completely framed in. This header uh, that Jimmy built is a bit of a, uh, would you call it brain salad surgery? Yeah. Yeah, there was some, some angles and some geometry going on there to build that thing. Okay, so it's been a few days of work and a day off, but we've reached our first point where we're ready to start hanging drywall. My dad's here to help us out. Um, we've got our first layer of flooring down here in the control room. This is a material that we're calling soundboard because we can't remember the actual name of it, but it's actually making it a lot nicer to stand over here. But what we're about to do is put our first layer of drywall, actually two layers of drywall, on the inside of this wall. And Jimmy, why are we uh, why are we doing that? We're doing this so that we can begin to frame in the interior walls. We have to seal this up first because there's no way to seal it up once we build another wall in front of it. And we're just doing the inside because the outside is going to need to remain open until uh, all the electrical gets pulled through and stubbed in and then we can close that up as well, insulate it and close it up. And so, as soon as we get a couple layers of drywall on this, we're going to begin to frame in the interior walls of the studio and give it its actual shape. What? Coming at you live, sledgehammer.gov. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this entire time I've been talking about, oh, we're gonna keep the bar, we're gonna keep the bar, and I lost that fight. Uh, it just- We're uh, not gonna keep the bar. <laughs> We just realized that it's, uh, well, we realized that it, it's taking up too much of the room here. And once we move the water heater and the HVAC, having all of that space open is gonna, it's just the right move. So uh, I got Susie Jones and her boyfriend Hunter down here and I'm gonna let them take this bar out. So uh, I've at it. Okay, <laughs> how? <laughs> put some, put some, you know. Up it's top? Some, it's got some gravity in it, so, you know. Put some bass there. There you go. All right. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Look at you! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I feel so alive. <laughs> How do I do it, though? I gotta figure out a way to, like... Yeah, no, you're a natural, so whatever comes first. Yeah, yeah just... Improv. Tell me action. Action. Don't forget to smash that like button. Like so. Okay, so we're now starting to frame the inner wall of the control room. And uh, Jimmy was actually just telling me something that I didn't realize until we got to this point of the build, which is that this wall is actually not going all the way up to the ceiling, to the floor joists of the first floor. And why is that? 
Well, because we don't want it to resonate with the um, upstairs wood. Um, so it will, there will literally be a little, little bit of a gap in between. So in theory, the room inside the room here is this completely detached um, thing. It's its own thing. Even though it looks like it's part of the rest of it, it really isn't. So you can see here, we have starting here on the floor plate going up, we're gonna have an air gap between the exterior wall and the interior wall, exterior of the control room. So these two walls are not connected at all and it won't be connected to the ceiling at all either. So, this is where the vocal booth is going to go. I'm going to start framing this back wall in today, and I'm assuming start these double walls here. One of the next big decisions that has to be made is what are we doing about this door jam? Are we staying with just one exterior door here to come in and out of the vocal booth and control room? Or do we reverse that door and hang a second door? Yeah. Which hanging a second door isn't just as simple as hanging a second door, because because you have to take that door completely apart and take all of the, the basically rebuild the jam and um, take the lock sets off, et cetera, et cetera, flip it around, make it swing the other way. There's been a few points in this build where one decision affects three or four other decisions. Every time. <laughs> this is interesting. So if we keep this one door here, my original plan was to use the vocal booth for guitar cabinets and just have you know the amp heads in the control room, guitar cabs in the vocal booth, and, and this is where I would record from. But we need to test and see if just this single door is gonna leak too much sound out into the backyard. We could paint Michelangelo. And yeah, go ahead and do that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you guys gotta see this. Jimmy spent the last day working on what I think is gonna be a really cool statement piece of the studio back here. What do we got going on here? Well, this is going to be the back wall of, of the rim. And we decided that we were going to, um, our first sort of uh, wall treatment is gonna be diffusers. And then we're gonna figure out soft around that. And I wanted to put a pretty large diffuser in the back of the room. And um, it's been a little bit of an art project. And it's also gonna be a very highly effective, very large diffuser. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, you can kind of get a sense of the scale here if I back up. I mean, that's that's pretty big. And then the couch, the main control room couch is gonna go right there. So when you're sitting in the control room hanging out, you'll uh, be right in front of the diffuser there. Yeah, so we're moving right along the past couple days here. We're getting this side of the control room framed in. We're, we're coming down to the end of this, uh, this portion of the project. You know, Jimmy's only here for a couple more days and then uh, hopefully he'll be back within the next four to six weeks. I have to go to Germany during that time to play on a record, which is gonna be awesome. But I'm incredibly happy with the progress we've made in the last two weeks here. I mean, it, it, already this, this space is completely different. It's completely changed. And I am just absolutely beyond excited about what this is turning into. This is, uh, this is literally gonna be my, my dream studio. And um, I think this place is gonna let us accomplish a lot and do a lot down here. So uh, yeah, back to work. Why are we building this wall is so far off of the actual basement structure here. Well, we did this one mostly that far off so that we could recess this um, diffuser. diffuser panel here. 
and um, also just a little bit of dead air is actually kind of kind of your friend. It's uh, you know it gets past that insulation, then there's air, then there's another hard surface. It uh, it all in its aggregate kind of really helps to absorb the stuff that we don't want leaking in and out. So the idea is as sound comes through, it's passing through drywall, insulation, bouncing off the wall, then reflecting back. Back through the through insulation, the back through the drywall. By the time that action takes place, there's pretty much no energy left whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> another one of my favorite musician jokes. How, how many producers does it take to change a light bulb? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> What's that you're using? This is a uh, cut nail, a concrete nail driver, and it is accentuated by a 22 round. And it puts nails through the concrete pretty much like this right here. Fire and hole. Oh. I, I technically did warn you. Fire in the hole. All right, so it's been almost exactly two weeks since we first started working down here. But we wanted to give a quick sort of synopsis of what we've done in this first two week run. Well, at this moment, we're, Rhett's in the vocal booth and I'm standing in the doorway between the vocal booth and the control room. All the, the exterior walls have all been wrapped up and now the interior walls are framed and we're gonna have to stop there so that the electricians can pull all of their cable through and we can pull all of the technical cable into here for uh, tie lines and that sort of thing. And then into here we have what the uh, control room is going to be and we still have a pesky load bearing wall right in the middle of it. But we met with a structural engineer the other day who gave us a great solution for that. And so when I come back we have every belief that that will be gone and we can finish this the rest of the way. It's going to turn out to be about 22 by 16 feet long and wide, and we're gonna get uh, close to nine feet in ceiling height in here. As it is turning out as such, we have pretty much decided that a console is gonna go in this room, so we're all really excited about that. Decided about a day ago that the console is what we're going with. And we needed to decide that because we kept running into issues with the framing trying to decide, well, if we do a console, we're gonna to have to frame it this way. If we do outboard gear, we're gonna to need to frame it that way. And it became apparent pretty quickly that we needed to make that decision. So it has been made. We need to soon identify what that vintage board is going to be so that we know that it's going to fit in here and we know where its power supplies are gonna go and what those are and how much noise they do or do not make. This is our front of the control room here and we've got the exterior wall built and we have covered the inside of it because you can't cover it once the next wall gets built. The interior wall, however, touches virtually nothing. It is a free-floating room at this point. That brings its own little challenges. It's uh, sort of like nailing jello to the wall <laughs> sometimes. So for now, Jimmy has got a flight to catch. Thanks, man. See y'all the next time. We'll uh, see you real soon. Awesome. Hey, Brett from the present here. Uh, almost one calendar year after all of the work that you just saw, I'm standing in the live room and as you can tell, it looks quite a bit different. We have a ceiling, we have walls, uh, almost all of the framing is done. You're going to see all of that in the next episode. Like I said, the project hit a major snag, got stalled for almost a year, but we got through it. Now this is a full build series, I'll have a link to the playlist down below as more of these videos come out. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you for watching all the way till the end of the video. Also, thanks to Jimmy Bird, the studio designer and builder. I'll have links to his Instagram and his email down below. If you have any questions about this project or your own studio build project, reach out to Jimmy down there. And also a huge thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this build series. Uh, more on them as we get later into the series and we start to outfit this place with gear. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe down below so that you can see how we got here.